Okay. It's no secret that here on Delmarva Life, we love our pets. And that's why we often share stories of what many of them that we know will probably capture your heart in one way or another. For instance, remember Mufasa and his love for stuffed animals? His owners say Mufasa would escape through a window at night and then scale fences to steal stuffed toys from properties and Mufasa would then come home with all of his treasures. There was also Brutus, who suffered frostbite on all four paws, which forced his former owners to amputate his toes. Brutus couldn't walk on hard surfaces, run like a normal dog, or go up and down stairs. But a family rescued Brutus and gave him hope, raising the more than $12,000 needed to get Brutus four prosthetics. Don't you absolutely love stories like that? Well, today we're going to meet another little fellow that's going to wrap his paws right around your heart. This is Tuna the Chewini. He's the underdog with the overbite who has won the adoration of millions through his Instagram account. And as you can see, he even has his own little book, Tuna Melts My Heart. We are so happy to welcome Tuna to Delmarva Life along with his human book author, Courtney Dasher. Courtney, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thank you so much for having us. I gotta ask you though, what's the story behind the name Tuna? Great question. So when I first got him, um, I named him Mr. Burns because he resembles Montgomery Burns from The Simpsons. Right. And I didn't really love it, so I started calling him Toonie, which was just the nickname for cartoon. And then about six months into me having him, my nephew, who was six at the time, mistakenly thought I was calling him Tuna, and then immediately, <laughs> like in that moment, I was like, yes, his name is Tuna, and I changed it. Oh my goodness, more than a million fans on social media. What is it that's so appealing about yeah. Tuna? Oh, I think that people um, love his unconventional qualities. Not only does he have a few physical differences, so he, he was born with a pronounced overbite and a recessed jawline, and he has something that I've dubbed a shrivel neck, where he has like a lot of wrinkly neck folds here. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's also just unconventional in his personality. He's really charming and endearing, and I think people just are captivated by him, and they melt their heart. He right. melts their hearts. Oh my goodness. Okay, so tell us his story. What, what happened when you first met Tuna? So um, I was told that you could foster a dog, and that was my intention the day I met Tuna. And I saw him, he was four months old at the time. He was sitting in a cage with a little sweater on, shivering, and he looked, he was downcast and insecure. And uh, when I saw him, I just fell in love with him immediately. And my plan was just to foster, but a right. week later, I, I ended up adopting him, and <laughs> we are just more so in love. So he's, he's, <laughs> he's, like, like, he's like falling asleep. He's actually changed your life. Very much so, yes, he has changed my life. How? He, um, well, he brings me a lot of joy on a daily basis, and I started my Instagram with that intention because I knew that he wasn't just bringing me joy, but he was bringing a lot of other people joy and laughter, right. and that's changed my life because I have a heart for people. I love people, and I love when people experience joy, and so it's just changed me because now I'm able to interface with people all over the world who have just shared their testimonies that, like, Tuna's changed their um, just terrible day into a really great day, and they've right. uplifted, he's uplifted their spirits and um, been a great distraction from like cancer treatment. So it's just all around just been so awesome to have a dog that is a catalyst to change people's days. He certainly looks content right now. Now, you use social media now as a platform for animal rescue. Why is it so important to you? Yeah, so again, that wasn't an agenda when I first started, but because he's a rescue, um, almost immediately when we, when we first went viral, I was like, this would be such a great platform to spread awareness for rescue because it was newly introduced to me. And, um, and since then, you know, we partner with different rescue group organizations from all across the country and even have um, done some things with animal rescue groups in London as well. So it's just, I think it's important to get that message out there and social media is a very powerful platform. So I use that as a good opportunity to do that. And you're also using the book, Tuna Melts My Heart to do the same thing. Tell me about the book. Yeah, so the book, uh, I 
It was a great opportunity for me to share more of his story because on my Instagram, you see snapshots into his day, but I wanted to create a book where it was a 15 chapter story about a day in the life of Tuna. So it starts with him waking up to him going to bed and everything in between. And um, there's all new photographs, about 120 photos, and it's, uh, it's accompanied by my commentary. Wow. So it's just a fun story and it's for all demographics and um, yeah, it's, it's suitable for children and it's great for adults and everybody alike. So, so can you give me a real quick snapshot of what a day in the life of Tuna the underdog with the overbite is like? Yeah, it's not super eventful, but when you read the story, it's just so, it's fun and engaging because his photos accompany and they're just great. But basically, again, waking up and then in between he, um, he plays with his, he has two best friends. They're both named Colin. That's a fun story, which you'll, you'll hear more about in the book. Yeah. And then um, we go to the beach, we go for a car ride. He takes a nap, he undresses himself. And that's really, <laughs> that's one of my favorite chapters. I call it Nakey Nakey. Um, and then he, he goes to take a bath and then I read him his story about his life and our adventure that we're on. And then he goes to bed. Wow, how about that? Tuna, I've got to tell yeah. you, you look extremely dashing in that bow tie. Courtney Dasher, thank you so much. <laughs> for your time with us this Thank afternoon. Thank you for having us. Wonderful talking Thank to you. Thank you very much. Now, if you'd much. like to read more about Courtney and Tuna, all you have to do is go to WBOC.com and click on our picture at the top of the page. Our pets really are unique creatures, aren't they? For instance, has this ever happened to you? You say something to your dog and they just kind of look at you and then cock their head to the side like they're saying, what? Wouldn't you just love to get into their head and really know what was going on in that little mind? Well, as reporter Maurice Dubois learned, thanks to some researchers who are trying to figure out Fido, you might soon be able to. It's a puppet show for pups. In one scene, a rat puppet helps a hedgehog puppet up a hill. In another scene, the rat knocks the hedgehog down. The dog seems captivated by the performance, but what is he actually thinking? That's what researchers at Yale University are trying to find out. Um, similar studies have been done with human infants and what you find is that human infants they don't like the guy who was mean and so we're doing the same thing with dogs to try to see do dogs morally evaluate as humans do. Lori Santos is the director of the Yale Canine Cognition Center where all they do is study dogs and the goal is to learn everything they can about the dog's mind. Dogs are just fascinating, right? Like, we love them. They live in our home. Anyone who hangs out with a dog is constantly wondering, what are they thinking? Do they love me? To figure this all out, in addition to the puppet show, researchers put hundreds of volunteer dogs to a series of other tests. This one involves a book. The dog watches as his or her companion sits and reads. Then she puts the book on the floor behind her. A moment later, someone comes into the room and takes the book. What we're really trying to see is whether or not dogs know when we kind of have missed some information. Can they realize that first of all? And when they do realize it, are they motivated to help? The results, again and again, not only do the dogs seem to realize something is wrong, but they also seem to be trying to alert their companions, many of whom were not one bit surprised by their pup's concerned reactions. At home, he's really observant. And he's always paying attention. Yeah, he's a very concerned dog, and uh, there's a lot of humanizing things about him. He was just kind of like, what do you think about this? In another test, the dog and companion are relaxing in a room when the researcher suddenly introduces a new object. Whoa, rocket, look! She's telling him, wow, look at how interesting that is. The goal of this test is to see whether a dog will become interested in the same item people are and most were. When she did her pointing now, all of a sudden, he was directing his gaze at the object, um, being really interested in it. Back at the puppet show, when all the scenes have played out, the test dog does indeed seem to be a little leery. So what, if anything, can researchers surmise from the testing they've done so far? The most surprising thing for me has been about how many of our intuitions about dogs are right. So we have all these intuitions that dogs know what we're feeling and that dogs want to communicate with us. The relationship between dogs and humans, that's very unique. They might have picked up on some of our cognitive skills. One thing that we have found consistently is how in tune dogs are with our emotions. 
Now, so far, the center has tested 300 dogs. They found the dog mind is a lot more complex, but they say they've got a whole lot more study to do, and they've got like a thousand <laughs> dogs on their list. I think that is so fascinating. It is, it really. I'd is. always want to know what my dog's thinking. Well, there are plenty of other dogs and cats, for that matter, that are waiting for something else a home. You could be the one to walk into their life and change it forever. In fact, let's meet some of those sweet faces right now. Delmarva Life Sean Stryker is at the Delaware SPCA in Georgia to introduce us to a few of the cats and dogs here on Delmarva that are looking for a home. Sean? Jimmy and Lisa, first and foremost, I have to thank all of the volunteers for braving the elements to come out to help get some of these animals adopted. I'm here with Bonnie Simon. Now, you're one of the volunteers. I am. Now, rain or shine, snow or sleet, somebody has to be here for the animals. And that's the, the dedicated staff here. And that's one of the reasons I come down, because they are so great with the animals. So you guys are dedicated, and we're dedicated to getting these animals adopted. So let's bring a couple out. Let's start off with Colton. So Colton is a, a very, very pretty cat. Tell me about Colton over here. We have two cats coming out. They are both um, feline negative for um, AIDS and leukemia. They are spay or neutered and they are microchipped. Colton is 11 years old and he is very, very cuddly. Worry about our older guys because some people don't like the older cats and he is wonderful. He, he looks is. like a great, great cat and will make a great addition. Next we have Carbon. Let's bring Carbon over. Carbon is Opposite, Colton is sand colored, Carbon is black. Tell me about Carbon. Carbon likes affection. He's six years old, um, but he's more of a, you come to me and pet me, but I'm not going to be in your lap uh -huh. kind of guy. So he's independent. He is more independent, But it yes. still would make a great addition to your home. Awesome boy. All right, so you have a lot of great dogs here, a lot of older dogs, and we want to bring one of them out right now. Up first, we have Mixie. Let's bring Mixie over here. Wait until you meet this girl. She is sweet. She's a, she's laying down, so we got to get her up and bring her over here. But Hi, tell Mix. me about Mixie. Look at her. Mixie is nine years old. She's uh -huh. a lab mix. Uh, she lost her... Uh, owner, um, her owner passed away, so she wound up here and she's looking for her forever home. She's a wonderful girl, calm, loves walks, loves to sit out in the sun, very calm, wonderful dog. Great, uh, thanks so much, Mixie, you're a great, great girl. And last but certainly not least, Probably we not have together. Josephine. Josephine is eager hey, to get on television. She's been making some noise. Tell me about Josephine. Josephine is also six years old. Um, the same as Colton, and um, she loves walks. She loves to play with a big ball in the yard and rips it apart. She also, in the summer, we have little kitty pools. She will lay in that pool when she's hot to cool herself down, and she well, loves to have water sprayed at her. She, and I heard if you rub her belly, she'll stay still, so that's what I was trying, and she is <laughs> rubbing her belly. She's she paralyzed is. here. Thanks yes. so much. Thanks, Josephine. Well, guys, if you want to hear more about these animals or see them again, all you have to do is go to our website, WBOC.com, and click on our picture at the top of the page. Now, now that we showed you uh, great animals, a couple that you may want to take home, once you take them home, you might want to take them on your next road trip. Coming up, I'll show you how to get you and your new animal from point A to point B safely. Jimmy and Lisa, back to you guys. All right, I think I fell in love with Josephine in that one. What about See, you, I Jimmy? Was, it was between Mixie and Josephine. I oh. couldn't make up my mind. <laughs> you know, on top of our pets, another thing we love about Fridays. Hmm. We get to showcase a local music talent we have here on Delmarva today. Anointed for Greatness takes the stage in historic Studio D. Delmarva Life, we'll be right back.